Good evening again. My name is Kwesi Yanku, Director of Student Development and Training. Thank you all for uh, supporting the show yesterday or watching the show yesterday. Today is our last uh, presentation of uh, uh, 1,000 Steps uh, Share Out. And so we will we'll be presenting theater, some theater classes and uh, our music classes tonight. So uh, please grab a seat, uh, relax, and enjoy the show. I will see you at the end. What you're going to see is scene study. And these are beginning, beginner actors, some who have never acted before. Different, a wide age a range. I think maybe eight to, well, she wasn't here today, but 15, 16. So, and we're just learning what it is uh, about to relate to one another in a scene. Taking the script, trying to digest it, learn it, and then relate to another human being. And that's what scene study is all about. So I hope you enjoy it. Here, they're not off book yet. It's the process and they're still learning, but we just wanted to have them have the experience of getting in front of this camera, oh, this camera, and just having fun. So thank you, enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. Ismene, dear sister, you would think that we had already suffered enough for the curse on Oedipus. I cannot imagine any grief that you and I have not gone through. And now, have they told you of the new decree of our King Creon? I have heard nothing, but I know that two sisters lost two brothers, a double death in a single hour. And I know that the Argive army fled in the night, but beyond this, nothing. I thought so, and this is why I wanted you to come out here with me. There's something we must do. But why do you speak so strangely? Listen, Ismene, Creon buried our brother Oedipus with military honors, gave him a soldier's funeral, and it was right that he should. But Polynesus, who fought us bravely and died miserably. They say Creon has sworn no one shall bury him. No one mourned for him. But his body must lie in the fields, a sweet treasure for Creon birds to find as they search for food. That is what they say, and our good Creon is coming here to announce it publicly. And the penalty, stoning to death in the public square. There it is. And now you can prove what you are, a true sister or a traitor to your family. Antigone, you have gone mad. What could I possibly do? You must decide whether you will help me out or not. I do not understand you. Help you in what? Ismene, I'm going to bury him. Will you come? Bury him? You just said that the new law forbids it. He's my brother and he's your brother too. But think of the danger. Think of what Creon will do. Creon is not strong enough to stand in my way. Ah, oh, sister. Oedipus died, everyone hating him, wrote his own search, brought to light, his eyes ripped out by his own hand, and Jocaste died, his mother and wife at once. She twisted the cords that strangled her life. Our two brothers died, each killed by the other sword, and we are left. But, oh, Antigone, think of how much more terrible than these. Our own death will be if we should go against Creon and do what he has forbidden. We are only women. We cannot fight with man, Antigone. The law is strong. We must give in to the law in this scene. And worse, I beg the dead to forgive me, but I am helpless. I must yield to those in authority. I think it is da dangerous business to always be meddling. If that is what you think, I should not want you, even if you ask to come. You have made a choice. You can be what you want to be. But I will bury him. And if I must die, I say the crime is holy. I shall lie down with him in death, and I shall be as dear to him as he is to me. It is the dead, not the living, who make the longest demands. We die forever. You may do as you like, since apparently the laws of God mean nothing to you. They mean a great deal to me, but I have no strength to break laws that are made for the public good. That must be your excuse, I suppose, but as for me, I will bury the brother I love. Antigone, I am so afraid for you. You need not be. You have yourself to consider after all. But no one will hear of this. You must tell no one. I will keep it a secret. I promise. Oh, tell it. Tell everyone. Think how they'll hate you when it all comes out. If they learn you knew about it the whole time. So fiery. Should be cold with fear. Perhaps. But I'm not. I am only doing what I must. But can you do it? I say that you cannot. Very well. When my strength gives out, I shall do no more. Impossible things should not be tried at all. Go away, Ismene. I shall be hating you soon, and the dead will too, for your words are hateful. Leave my foolish plan. I am not afraid of danger if it means death. It will not be the worst of death, death without honor. 
Everything in this house is broken. Everything. Why don't you just throw it down? Why don't you just get out of here? It just slips. Everything slips, Damien. You don't ever pay attention. Let me help. I don't need your help, Damien. I didn't mean that. I mean there's some money around here. Help you out. I could help you clear things up. Damien, all I want you to do is go to school and clear up the suspension. SAC class in school suspension is stupid. You just sit around all day and do nothing. I don't want to hear it. Oh. If your school calls me at my work one more time, and do you think I need your help paying bills? I've taken care of you all this time, haven't I? Haven't I put a roof over your head and made sure we could eat? But you're working two jobs and all you talk about is paying the bills. We could do something else. Oh, really? And how do you suggest someone make money other than with a job, Damien? Exactly. That's what I need. Max said he'd find me a job, and I can make my own house. I know you didn't just leave Mac in this house. Didn't I tell you to stay away from him? If I hear you talk about Mac again, I'm going to slap you into next week. And I better not see you standing on that corner with him like I did last night again. Do you understand me? Just standing there like he doesn't know what time of day it is. Oh, what? Yes, ma'am. That's right. Now come on, Damien. Hurry up and eat. If we, we gotta go before I'm late again. I said you can go. Mom, I can get myself to school. Oh, you could. Well, I wonder how you lost your way last time. You remember the school called me and said you didn't show up to class for a week? Oh, you don't remember? No, it's a big waste of time. You don't see squat but copy the dictionary and... Boy, you better watch your mouth when you're talking to me. Hmm, copying the dictionary is exactly what you need to slow you down. And that's what you do when you're suspended in school. Cursing on this house, I don't know who this person is. I'm just tired of seeing you struggle out here. Ever since my dad went to jail, you've changed my mom. You still won't tell me what happened to him? Don't you think I'm big enough by now? Don't get started talking about that stuff this early in the morning. Eat your food so we can get out of here. And who told you I was struggling? Mac? He's the one struggling. Not Mac. Chone. He's been like a brother to me and told me about not just taking care of myself. He told me to, he told me to be a man in every action I make. Everything in this house is broken. Everything. Why don't you just throw it down? Why don't you just get out of here? It just slipped. Everything slips, Damien, when you don't ever pay attention. Let me help. I don't need no help, Damien. I didn't mean with that. I mean with some money around here. Help you out. I can help you clear things up. Damien, all I want you to do is go to school and clear up that suspension. SAC class in school suspension is stupid. You just sit around all day and do nothing. I don't want to hear it. No, no. If your school calls me at work one more time, and what makes you think I need your help? Paying bills? I've taken care of you all this time, haven't I? Haven't I put a roof over your head and made sure you could eat? But you're working two jobs and all you talk about is paying the bills. We could do something else. Oh, really? And how do you suggest someone make more money other than with a job, Damien? Exactly. That's what I mean. Mac said he'd find me a job and I can make my own hours. I know you didn't just say Mac in this house. Didn't I tell you to stay away from him? If I hear you talking about Mac again, I'm going to slap you until next week. And I better not see you standing on that corner with him like I did last night. Do you understand me? Just standing there like he doesn't know what time of the day it is. Yeah, awesome. What? Yes, ma'am. That's right. Now come on, Damien. Hurry up and eat. We got to go before I'm late again. I said you can go. Mom, I can get myself to school. Oh, you could? Well, I wonder how you lost your way last time. You remember when the school called me and said you didn't show up to class for a week? Oh, you don't remember? Mom, it's a big waste of time. You don't do squat but copy the dictionary. Boy, you better watch your mouth when you're talking to me. Copying the dictionary is exactly what you need to slow you down. And that's what you do when you're suspended in school. Cursing in this house, and I don't know who this boy thinks he is. I'm just tired of seeing you struggle out here. Ever since my dad went to jail, you've changed a lot. All this time, you still won't tell me what happened to him? Don't you think I'm big enough right now? Don't get started talking about that stuff this early in the morning. Eat your food so that we can get out of here. And who told you I was struggling? Mac? He's the one struggling. Not Mac. Tone. He's been like a brother to me and schooled me and not about not just taking care of myself. He told me to be a man. Every decision I make, to be accountable for the consequences that may follow and that a man acts in his best interest of those he loves. Tone? You sitting in my kitchen telling me about what Tone told you? Tone who hangs out with Mac tell you how to be a man, Damien? 
You can't even imagine consequences, let alone spell it. When you go to an SAC class today, maybe you can copy out ain't got no damn sense neither. A hundred times. Do you know where John is right now? Hmm. He's in jail. You don't believe he did what they said. Well, if he didn't do it, I bet he knows who did. You know he can't just go there, you know? Nothing gets solved on this block. Everything is broken. Everything. Yeah, your daddy wouldn't do it in, like that. Keep on. You'll be right there behind him. I don't know why I'm getting all worked up. Your father, You are your father's son. You act just like him. And that means you are going to do whatever the hell you want anyways. Now come on, because I'm late. Hello and welcome to the Thousand Steps uh, 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 presentation of uh, uh, Flowing Dragon Swords and Stage Combat Instruction for Physical Action Acting and Physical Theater at East Bay Center for Performing Arts. Um, one of the wonderful things about our class is we all get an opportunity when we are discussing and trying to get to a clear physical way of expressing, of telling, of uh, supporting a story um, coming from a basis of connection. And that connection is extremely important in all aspects of, well, of life, but certainly in the theater. And one of the things we get to do with Flowing Dragon Swords is play in a deeply connected way. So I hope you'll enjoy it and um, we'll have at it. Ready one, here we go, all together. Just off the top of our peripheral vision on the top, right? Good, good. Ready two, ready three. This is also a draw, you're drawing a person in. Ready four, goes out the back. Palm, remember the top of it is on the, on the thigh in the back, like it's going to be when you bring it around the front in five. Ready? around the front for ready five there and pummel thrust six on three one two three yeah very nice thank you very much everybody very nice great and i'm going to say thank you very much to our friends at east bay center for performing arts for letting us learn how connection tells better stories Well, hi, my name is Alan Taylor, and I'm the teacher of this class called Acting Technique for the Stage. It's a class where we learn different techniques for acting, and in this class, we have applied these techniques to the monologue. We want to share speech, and I have several students that will be performing their monologues for you this evening. Uh, keep in mind that this is a work in progress. We're very much in process. This is not a final performance. You may even hear a, an actor call for a line. That's where we are. Okay, so look at it as being a dress rehearsal. Or even a preview. We're not quite there. But anyway, enjoy. Enjoy the monologues. And here we go, starting with From the Scene, The Cafeteria Blues by Roger Kushner. The character of Robert is now giving his opinion to his friend of the cafeteria food. It's the worst, man. The worst. I only go to the cafeteria when I haven't got time to go out. The stuff's like hospital food or something. Everything tastes exactly the same. And it's real stuff like for old people without teeth. Like Jello. They always have Jello every day in about 90 barfree flavors ranging from cherry to naughty pine. And then they have these dishes with names where you can't even figure out what's really in them. Like turkey surprise. Hey, like I know what turkey is. But what's the surprise, man? Tell me about the surprise. But they never do. Seems like nobody down there ever knows what the surprise is. That's because they're afraid to tell you it's sawdust. There's stuff like that on the menu every day. Mystery stuff that you gotta be super brave to try. Stuff like fiesta rice, country chatter, and shepherd's pie. What the hell's in shepherd's pie anyway? Last time I tried it, I think maybe an old shepherd's socks. They come up with some real peak concoctions, alright? Like vegetable middle-aid, Spanish bean soup, sweet, and sour turkey over rice. Real appetizing, huh? 
And then sometimes they go all out and have pizza. But it's like pizza from another planet. Kind of like toasted white bread loaded with ketchup. Last time I ate it, I threw up in my gym bag. The cafeteria is like the restaurant of last resort, you know? The only thing you can be really safe about down there is the water. And even that smells a lot like tricky surprise. And the school's always happy with nutrition too. Is that a crack up or what? Hey, you're better off at McDonald's any time. The worst you get there is over salted grease. See. From the scene, My Real Father by Lucy James, the character of Trina talks to her foster mother about her fears of meeting her biological father. See. Mom, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can meet this man I've never known. Gosh, what if he hates me? What if he thinks I'm ugly? I just know he's not going to like me. Oh no, what if I don't like him? What if he comes through that door, right? Our eyes meet, and the feeling's just not there. Yeah, he's my father, but not like Frank is. Frank is dad, and this guy, I mean Ben, it's just the father, right? I mean, he and my biological mother decided they couldn't deal with having a kid at such a young age. So they gave me up. And I'm cool with that, I think. It's just, I don't know what to expect from him. The letters he sent were cool and all, but those are just words on a paper. Fine. I don't even... I don't even know why I bothered looking for him. I'm 18 now. I should be worrying about college, not sweating the old stuff. I mean, my biological mother couldn't deal with it when I found her. She has her own life now with her own kids, the one she actually wanted. I'm just a bad memory she's trying to erase. What do you mean I don't understand? Mom, she doesn't want to know me. But she sure doesn't want her husband and kids knowing she had a bastard kid when she was 16. So what if my father feels the same way? Rejects me like she did? I should have never bothered contacting him. I'm setting myself up big time. I just know it. He's here? Okay, I'm ready to meet him. From the scene, Basketball or Me by Roger Kirchner, the character of Maria lets her boyfriend know that he has a big decision to make. Like, give me a break, okay? I mean, every night you've got basketball practice? What about me here? What about me walking home alone every night like some lonely nerd because you're stuck at the gym? Don't I matter? Don't I exist? I know. I know you can't get out of it. I know that. But you could come on over once in a while after practice. Too tired? But you're not too tired when it comes to copying my homework. Not too tired when it comes to ripping off my brain. I used to think dating a basketball star was so cool. But now I'm thinking maybe it sucks. Now I'm thinking maybe David Johnson? So what, he's in drama class. He is not. Just because a guy goes out for drama does not make him gay. And even if he is, there's nothing wrong with being gay. That's just more of your macho basketball mentality, you turkey. And another thing, when, we, when we're together on the weekends, all you ever do is talk about sports. What about me? So what? What about me? Don't I count? Or do I come in a weak third against LeBron James and Steph Curry? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that one before. Look, Reggie, all I'm saying is that maybe you don't really care about me anymore. Maybe all you really care about is hanging out with a bunch of dorks whose shoe sizes are larger than their IQs. Maybe you better 
Maybe you better find someone else you can copy homework off of so you won't flunk out of basketball because I've had it, okay? Like this whole thing just isn't working anymore. You're way too inconsiderate and self-centered. And besides, you're way too tall. See. This is the beginning strings class and our first piece that we'll be playing is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star.
Our next piece will be Wooden Soldiers March by Evelyn Murray.
the Monday night class, uh, the Combined Instrumental Ensemble. Today we'll be playing a four-part uh, canon called Doremi.
everyone, what do you think about the show? Let's give them a round of applause again. That was a wonderful work. Given the period they've uh, been in class, uh, short period they've been in class, they've done a really good job. So again, I would like to take the opportunity to say a big thank you to all of you for watching the show. Uh, please don't forget to leave comments. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the faculty members uh, that have worked with our students this semester and also all of the students for uh, the wonderful work uh, they've put in. Um, few announcements before we leave. Uh, we have some important dates coming up for uh, our Young Artist Diploma students. Uh, the summer intensive date, please be on the lookout for email from, from us regarding the student assessment meetings, uh, orientation, and also uh, scheduling. Um, the dates for the summer intensive are June 21st through July 22nd, all right? Um, unfortunately, this semester, this uh, summer, we're not going to be uh, offering uh, Saturday series classes for our younger students. We apologize for that, but I can guarantee you we'll be back in the fall uh, with all the group classes. Again, thank you so much for coming and enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>